Hello, it is James again from James Films, and today I want to walk you through this really fun image here. And it was all made with one add-on in Blender that's already built in called Blender Kit. I made a similar image a couple weeks ago, and you guys seem to really like it, so I thought this would be a really fun one to start with for this series. So first go to Edit Preferences, and then type in Blender Kit. It should be the first thing that comes up, and you just check this box here. Mine was already checked, so just check yours, then go down and then save your preferences. So now what you'll see is if you go over to the right hand side of your screen, this nice tab called Blender Kit. And this comes with a bunch of free and also premium uh, models and textures. So you can select just free only to load all of the free assets. So let's just look at this bench here, for example. It will take a second to load in. If we hide the default cube, you can see what it looks like. It's already textured, it looks really nice. And you can just drop these really quickly into your scene to get a really nice design. So starting with the default cube, let's just tab into edit mode and then scale along certain axes by hitting S and X, X, S and Y, or S and Z, just to scale properly. So I like to set my camera early, so hit Control, Alt, and Zero once you find a good angle, and set your dimensions to 1200 by 1500, which is the good crop setting for Instagram if you're posting over there. So for my camera, I'll select it. We just need to fix the rotation quickly and then set to 35 millimeter focal length, which looks, I think, quite nice, a nice wide angle look. So just hit G and then Shift Z to scale, or to move the camera just along uh, the XY plane. And then we'll add in another cube and we'll scale this one up so that it's basically filling in what would be an arch on this door. You can use one and three on your number pad to look at front and side views and then just scale this along until it looks like it's about to fill the door. I'm just hitting G and Z to scale that top part just a bit. Then we'll add in a Boolean modifier and selecting our cube, and then we can just hide it from our viewport. So now you can see there's a nice arch cut right out of our cube. So selecting that cube again, I'm just renaming it to arch and then adding an array modifier, switching it so that it's along the Y, and then you can just move this along until it looks nice in your screen. Adding a whole bunch more of these to kind of get this nice depth of field, and then just using G and then Y to shift it along the Y axis. So that's looking pretty great so far. Let's just scale it in a little bit along the X so that it fills our frame a bit better. And then let's add in a plane for that ground. So I'm going up to seven on my numpad to look at top view and then shifting this along so that it's filling the entire door frame of this archway. And then S and Y to scale along the Y axis so that we have enough depth to it. I have to bring it a little bit further forward here just to fill that frame of my camera and rename it to the ground plane. So then I'm going to add in a sidewall as well by adding in another cube, hitting G and then Control Z to get it to scale up properly, and then moving it over to the left side of my frame. And then I'll do S and then Y to scale this all the way along to fill that complete edge. Okay, so we've got our scene here. It's very simple, really easy to build up, just using a couple cubes and primitive objects. We'll rename this one as well to Sidewall, and now we can get to our texturing phase using Blender Kit. So I'm gonna switch over to Material View, click on that plane, and then let's go over to Materials, and there's a really fun tile one that I like to use a lot, and we'll just subdivide it a couple times here just to have a little bit of geometry to work with when displacing in cycles. So we'll go over here and it is this floor tiles damaged one. You can see it's kind of stretched out weird, but if we UV unwrap it, it looks great. So let's show you what we're working here with here. So we already have a nice PBR shader setup already pre-added into our material, which is fantastic. Just by clicking that one button, we already have got a nice material. To enable Node Wrangler, go over to your add-ons and add that in, and then just hit Control and then click on that one slot there and you can just add this in so that you can adjust the UVs of your material to switch things around if you kind of want to shift your uh, tiles around a bit. I'm just going to use that mapping node to adjust the scale a bit so that they're a bit smaller because they're kind of large on my screen so I'm ending up with a value of about five here to have a nice looking tile grid. Let's go over to concrete here and then cube project this and then add in this one concrete material. You can see this one's already linked up with a mapping node, which is great. 
And we can zoom in a bit here on our, our uh, material view and scale this up a little bit to see how that looks. It's looking pretty nice. We'll just stretch it a little bit along the Y. And then we're gonna add that same exact material to our arches. So first I'm gonna apply that array modifier just so I can adjust the UVs individually of each of these arches. And we'll click on that same material here, that white wall concrete. And you can see it's already looking pretty nice. However, there is a bit of uniformity across each material. They've UV unwrapped directly the same across each one. So I'm just gonna to go to top mode, select our arches, and then select this one guy here. And then go over the UV editor, hit A to select everything, just G and then just shift it around. So that's a little bit different. You can zoom in and see exactly how we're affecting these arches. Just for each one, I'm just shifting it away so that they're not all in that same exact position. So that looks pretty good. And now let's set up some lighting. So we'll go to our rendered view and we're in EV currently, but I usually prefer to render in cycles, uh, which takes a little bit more time, but I feel like it looks a little bit more realistic. So, We'll add in a sun lamp here and then R and then Y to kind of bend it a little bit down and then R and then shift Z to sort of slide that over. So we're gonna add in a sky texture as well and adjust the angling of it a bit. If you kind of grab on this ball that showed up here and just kind of moving it around, we'll increase the strength of it so it's a bit brighter for our scene. And I would use HDRIs usually, but for this one, I just want to keep it all in Blender. So just have some time experiment around with this. If you drag this all the way up so that it's just the dark side, dark side showing, it'll get kind of this um, nice bit of a sunset glow kind of gradient from blue to orangish like that. You can see it looks really nice. And I'll adjust my sun lamp so that it is actually facing nice and adding these kind of cool shadows across from the arches. So that's already looking pretty great. So I actually don't really like the concrete material that I used as much there. So I actually add in a different one. And here there's a lot of experimentation to maybe just adjust the brightness of it a little bit. I can just add a bright contrast node and ramp it up by just 0 0.2, 0 0.3, just to give it a little bit more brightness and kind of have it match a bit more with our scene. I'll add that same material also to that left side wall. And that's looking pretty great. Just for fun, let's see if we can add in a fun model to the scene. So if I click on furniture, you can see there are a ton of really great free models in here. And I'll, I'll oftentimes just throw in one of these to add a little bit of dimension, add a little bit of uh, story to our kind of abstract design to kind of ground it a bit back more in reality. So for here, let's just add in like a bed or something, for example, here. So I'm gonna add in one of the first models here, which is this unmade bed, which looks pretty nice. It's already textured, got some nice cushions and, and blankets and stuff. So I can just hit S to scale this up a bit to get a little bit more to the dimensions and then R, Shift Z, so I can uh, switch it over to facing our camera a bit. And here again, it's just some experimentation, just scaling and, and moving it around. I'm just adjusting that sun lamp to be a bit brighter here as well, and then changing the angle by hitting R and then Y to just confine that movement to just the Y axis. So we've got these really nice shadows. I'll just adjust the bed a little bit more so it's kind of hidden a little bit behind that pillar a bit more. So I think that looks really great. So we can go and actually render this now. And you can also click on composition guides to kind of see what your camera will be seeing and to kind of get a really nice composition. I usually like to put on rule of thirds and then center so I can see exactly where objects are lining up in the camera to get really nice composition. And so I'll keep this nice and simple. I'm gonna actually enable GPU compute. If you have GPU, do that. I like to usually render between like 250 to 500 samples depending on my scene. I'm gonna go with 350 here and if only renders were this quick, that would be phenomenal. But there you go. Pretty nice, quick, easy render. And you got some really nice results, this kind of abstract design. If you do create something using this tutorial or with these or with Blender Kit, please tag me on Instagram. I'd love to see what you come up with and thanks so much.